Folsom Point. There was Folsom Point that was actually found at the uh, Stewart Cattle Guard. Folsom Point. Don't act like you don't know. At the Stewart's Cattle Guard archaeological site, you found a Folsom Point. What is a Folsom Point? It's a napped stone. It's an arrowhead. It's a very uh, particularly, distinctively um, napped arrowhead. It's like indented on the sides and then just like little ch -ch 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 notches all the way around versus just a kind of a fucking circle, you know, point. Just a, a circle point, just a regular boring, stupid circle point. It's actually, they're like uh, fucking gorgeous. And also, it was around a bunch of buffalo bison. It was in within the bone structure of a bison, which is an animal apparently hunted by the Folsom people. In New Mexico, 1908, George McJunkin. So what was the, what year was the first Folsom Point, Folsom Arrowhead? A Folsom Point is an arrowhead. The first Folsom Arrowhead was found in New Mexico, 1908, by George McJunkin. George McJunkin. How many bison were found at the Stewart's Cattle Guard site just north of Blanca, Costilla County? 49. 49. So they found 49 ancient bison. 49 ancient bison all in a big pile with a bunch of Folsom points. A whole bunch of projectile points and archaeological, like 400 pieces of archaeological you know, uh, pieces, whatever. So you had buffalo bones, Folsom points, 400 archaeological pieces. What the hell is going on there? Well, there's racist, fascist Tartarians. There's Tartarians who are around here, racist, fascist, criminal Tartarian motherfucking pieces of shit. So Western Tartarians, these are just conspiracy theorists. So these conspiracy theorists, they believe that there were absolutely no Native Americans. No Native Americans in North America. And who was here before the white race? The white race was here before the white race. The brown man apparently never was here. Or the brown man definitely didn't get here before white people. That's the Western Tartarians just cannot believe that. Tartarians also believe that the capitals of the states and the Great Pyramids, the Sphinx, the Manchu Picchu, basically anything that was ever built throughout history, this is created and built by the Western Tartarians. The reason why you and I don't know about this is because everybody's been suppressing it. They've been keeping this shit on the down low. They've been keeping this on the hush-hush. It's all the Tartarians. It's all the Tartarians. So, um, I think it's just racism. It's just Western Tartarians are just, you know, of the Western Hemisphere. They're a bunch of conspiracy theorists. There are Tartars, Tartar sauce. But I think they're Muslims. So Western Tartarians are just fucking white supremacist racists. They cannot fathom a world that was not white. They're just going to pretend that the white race was always here. The white people have always been in North America. But actually for... 14,000 years, white people just, what, 1492, so 530 years or so, so 530 years, and the brown man, the red man, and a little bit of the yellow man, right, uh, been around for 14,000 years, no white man, no white man to be found whatsoever, so, yeah, that timeline is, um, that means brown people, red people, yellow people, They've been here longer than, you know, white folks, and then white folks brought black folks with, you know, them, so pretty sure America, this is, this is rainbow land, this is rainbow revolution land, everybody, doesn't matter what color, you know, what hue of skin color, what hue your skin color is, it doesn't matter, come on, come on. So, fuck that Western Tartarian bullshit, what, you think, oh my god, I can't even fucking, you know, so you got buffalo bones, right, so it just, you know, it's, the racism is just so blatant to me, you got a bunch of ancient buffalo bones, okay, well, why do you have ancient buffalo bones, 50 ancient buffalo bones right there, and very specific Folsom points, very specific arrowheads, right, so what, they just planted them, just 49 ancient bison and all these 
Arrowheads, and it was the American Smithsonian, the Smithsonian Institute. And then they did like one excavation, two excavations, three excavations. They did like a dozen excavations, some in the 80s, some in the 90s. So they did a dozen excavations, and they did a big, you know, long um, literature review. So you got ancient buffalo bones right next to very specific Folsom points. Arrowheads, 49 ancient bison, American buffaloes, 100 arrowheads, 250 more artifact pieces. This is Stewart's Category. This is just north of Castilla County. So for those motherfuckers that want to believe in the white supremacist bullshit of Tartaria, you got to explain all that. You got to explain, you know, pick their grass. You got to explain skeletons. You got to explain... Carbon dating, yeah, you know it so well that you've debunked it, is that what you're trying to tell me? Or are you just saying you're just ignorant as fuck and you don't know shit about shit? You're just rejecting that which what you were told. What, brown people were here before? No way! Manchu, Pichu, nobody can stack rocks on top of one another except for the white. No, the only person that can... Fucking ridiculous, racist bullshit. And then you also got to explain all these Spanish conquistadors. You got Coronado, you got Don Diego de Vargas. They came, you know, close either to Talos or close, you know, close to the San Luis Valley, or they passed through through the Rio Grande. That's you know, uh, Vargas. Vargas was attacked by the Utahs. He was running away from the Apache del Hachas, and he's going to attack by the Utahs. He he was searching for the Utahs, the Utes. And the Utes were the Plains nomads, right, just chillaxing, they're just, what, hanging out. And then what about those Pueblos? You think there's people that was living in those Pueblos? The Pueblos look like houses. And that the whole idea is that the Pueblo, you know, natives, they were more civilized because they had houses versus the Plains, you know, the Utes and the Apache and the, the Comanche. They're just a bunch of horse riding, you fucking, you know, Plains nomads, but the goddamn you got to explain, why do you have rock shelters? Why do you have artifacts? Why do you have arrowheads? Why do you have ancient bison bones? Why do you have rock shelters? Why do you have ancient pueblos? Ancient pueblos are just up on the hills inside, you know, fucking arroyos and shit. Why would the Spanish conquistador talk about all the Native Americans? Why would they talk about all the different pueblos and all the different villages? Why would they mention it? Coronado had a biographer, too. So Coronado, Vargas, they're sitting there talking about the Plains Natives, you know, Indians, the Pueblo Indians, the Plains Indians. But none existed. They just made it all up. A bunch of Spanish conquistadors. This is for history. This is for the king. Hey, king, look, we did an entrada. We did this big entrada, so we want you to know about it. And it was a big fucking failure, so, you know, Jesus Christ. They just made it all up. Why would they make all this fucking insane shit up? They killed like a dozen here and then hung 70 toners. Why would they just make all that shit up? So, you know, before you try to debunk the official narrative, I think you actually got to know what the fucking official narrative is. And you got to, you know, written history, you're going to have to throw written history out the door because written history says there's Native Americans all over the place. And then archaeology, you're going to have to throw archaeology out the door. So fuck history and then fuck archaeology. And then once you, I guess, you know, throwing that foundation away, fuck that shit. I want to know exactly, precisely, who the fuck, what the fuck, when the fuck. <laughs> so, history is important. History is important. Now, let's carry on with the questions. This is the whole point of knowing the official, what is the official version? You could say the official version is wrong, but you don't even know the official version yet. So, let's, okay, what year did Zebulon Pike visit Castilla County? And then he built a stockade in Sanford, Conejos County. So this is Zebulon Pike. Frankly, if you speak English, I mean, you want to be a fucking racist. I mean, English, I guess that's kind of racist to think that all English speakers are white. But Zebulon Pike would be your first English speaker into the area. So the Spanish should give, you know, pay homage to Don Diego de Vargas. And then the uh, English speakers, the Spanish speakers, pay, you know, homage to Vargas. And the English speakers would have to pay homage to Zebulon Pike. He came and explored this area, Zebulon Pike, the first English speaker in 1807. 
So after the Spanish had already been around for, you know, about 1500s, so about 300 years the Spanish had already been around, 1694 is when, so over 100 years ago is when Vargas, Vargas came through the San Luis Valley, and then over 100 years later in 1807, Zebulon Pike, the English, is finally going to make it. And he's going to pretend to be a scout. Half of his fucking men are going to get frostbitten on the way here. He's going to build a stockade in Caneos County, talking about this huge rope that it was, you know, gigantic and shit. He's going to get arrested by the Spanish authorities, but they don't, uh, you know, hang him or arrest him or do anything. They just take him around. He's treated like a goddamn superstar. And then they release him back into the United States, and he's only going to, you know, get killed in the War of 1812, something that has, you know, this is 1807, so Zebulon Pike, essentially, that's the peak of his fucking life, because at 34 years of age, he's going to get cut down in the War of 1812. So there you go, fucking Henry Clay, James fucking Madison. So James Madison and Henry Clay are to be blamed for the War of 1812, a bunch of war hawking motherfuckers. What, we're going to take Canada over, right? We're going to be welcomed as liberators. And then when Canada repelled us, we're like, well, shit, well, we need to, you know, invade anyways. And then Tecumseh got killed, motherfuckers. Jesus Christ, you're not going to get any, you know, um, can there be any justice on stolen land? Can there be any justice what so goddamn devil on stolen land? Which Pueblo did Pooh Pay come from? So it was 1807, and it was either January or February. February 26th is, uh, is when Zebulon Pike is going to get arrested. So either January or February is the month. What specific day did he actually travel through here? I'm not for sure. Which Pueblo did Pooh Pay come from? The San Juan Pueblo, which today is called something else. The Okowinga, the Okowinga, the Okowinga Pueblo, but San Juan Pueblo for now. The San Juan Pueblo. So he was a Tiwa. The Tiwa came from the San Juan Pueblo. Who burned down? Number six, who burned down? Fort Pueblo on December 25th, Christmas, 1854. The Muashi and the Dindi Utes and the Yikaria Apache. So these are the Plains, the Plains, you know, Indians, so-called Indians and Natives. But just specific, right, they're just, let's be tribalistic. America's tribalistic. So the Muashi and the Dindi Utes and the Yikari Apache, the Yikari Apache, including White Earth, Tierra Blanca. Tierra Blanca is actually feigning friendship, feigning friendship, and then just wiped everybody out. All those Spanish, I think it was brown-on-brown brown crime, December 25th, 1854, Fort Pueblo, the Utes and the Apache just wiped everybody out. Only a few survivors. How old was Zebulon Pike when he was killed? What war was he killed in? What present day city was he killed at? 34 years of age. Zebulon Pike was only 34 years old when he gets cut down. So he got to do, you know, the uh, 1807, he got to explore the San Luis Valley for a minute. But then he's going to die just five years later at the War of 1812 or, you know, so then Toronto, uh, Toronto is the city. So the War of 1812 is actually the War of 1812, 13, 14, 15. It lasted for three years. But Toronto, so Zebulon Pike is going to get, you know, he's going to get blown up. He's going to get blown up in Toronto trying to liberate the Canadians because they need to be free from the British yoke. But the, apparently Canadians love the British yoke. They're like oppressed by the British. You know what? We love the Queen. Don't you ever talk about the goddamn... We're going to put the Queen on our money. What do you think about that, motherfuckers? Trying to take over Canada without our permission. What year was Chief Greenhorn killed Governor Anza? Huh? What year did Governor Anza kill Chief Greenhorn? Huh? <laughs> 1779. I said 1779. 1776 is when they founded San Francisco. San Francisco was founded in 1776. You know what? Three stations of the Stewart's Cattle Guard archaeological site were discovered. So there's three different sites or stations. You got the kill site, the butchering site, right? So you got the, you know, the place where you just murder all the damn buffalo, kill, kill, kill. And then once you killed all the damn buffalo, then you take it and you got to take off their hides. You got the hide processing center, and then you got the meat processing center, and then that's where the tools and everything is. 
So the hide, there's a specific place for the hides, specific place for the processing of the meats, and then a specific, let's see, one, a kill and initial butchering area, two, a peripheral work area where hide processing, other activities were taken, and three, a large residential camp where bison processing and weaponry repair and replacement were conducted. So a large residential camp, okay, so that's a different, a little bit different what I was saying. So a kill butchering area, and then a place where you're uh, processing the hide, and then a residential camp where they would actually process the meat of the bison, and they would repair the weapons that they had used in order to kill and pull the hide and use. And then, let's see, cross men's uh, projectile point fragments recovered in the, okay, so number 10. What spiritual location was Pope at when the divine vision for the Pueblo Revolution of 1680 came to him? If you don't know about the Pueblo Revolution of 1680, you've got to get yourself in, you know, some fucking knowledge about this shit. Frankly, if you can't answer any of these questions, you're not Costilla County. If you can't answer these basic questions, there should be, you know, a citizenship test. There needs to be a civil, a civil service exam. And you need to know the laws, you need to know the culture, and you need to know the goddamn history. You need to know the history and the heritage of Costilla County. You want to come into Costilla County with your own fucking horse shit? No, you need to know the history of Costilla County. And so, the history of Costilla County is Don Diego de Vargas. And understand that, you got to know about the, uh, the Pope, uh, Pope leading the Pueblo Revolution of 1680. They call it the Pueblo Revolt, but it was a successful revolution. They're going to whip the shit out of the goddamn Spanish, the Tiwa. That's Pope. Pope is the, out of the San Juan Pueblo, so he's fucking Tiwa. He's the leader of the Tiwa, and they tortured him, but he's going to hang out in Talos Pueblo for, you know, five years, and he got 46 different Pueblo uh, villages on board, and he was able to do it by tying this uh, string with a knot on it, and he told that the different villages to untie a knot each and every day because after whatever, ten fucking knots have been untied, that's when we attack. And he had this uh, epiphany, he had this vision in Akiva. They call it Akiva. This is a spiritual fucking underground, you know, thing, medicine man or something. So Pope, he's a medicine man. He gets divine inspiration. He's talking to God. He's got three spirits that talk to him, these three spirits could shoot fire from their fingertips as they rolls it up their bow. The three angels of the Lord said that if he destroyed the Spanish, then the crops would flourish. Of course, that when Jesus came, the corn mothers left. When Jesus came, the corn mothers, the corn, the corn mothers, the corn mothers left of number 11 of the 400 who surrendered to Don Diego de Vargas on December 30th, 1693. How many of the Tanners did Vargas hang? So 400, they're all going to surrender. 400 surrendered, two committed suicide, nine were killed. And out of the 20 Pueblos, only four were actually loyal to the Spanish, Santa Ana, Zia, San Felipe, and Pecos. So Pecos, Santa Ana, Zia, and San Felipe those are the only ones, but out of 20, 16 of them were against the Spanish. They were against the Spanish when they came back for the reconquering. And so the Tanos are going to surrender. Two are going to commit suicide. Nine were killed in the actual battle, but he's going to hang 70. So they should have just kept fighting. If he was going to hang 70, they should have just kept fighting and fighting because he was going to hang 70 anyways. What the fuck did the damn Tanos get out of surrendering? So, how many of the 400 who surrendered got hung? 70. 7 0. 70. 70. So, number 12. True or false? Pope was a medicine man condemned to die by the Spanish. This is true in Santa Fe. And then he, you know, is released. And then for five years, he's sitting there plotting against the Spanish. And he gets 46 of the Pueblo villages to spontaneous. Basically, this is a wildcat revolution. This is a revolution that just happened not out of nowhere. This is after 70 fucking years of trepidations and foibles and outrages. 70 years of foibles. And after 70 years of, you know, being oppressed, Pope 
the Tiwa, the Native Americans just fucking had it. And then they're going to kick the Spanish out, and they're going to kill like 500 Spanish, take 2,000 of the Spanish in Santa Fe, run them down, you know, below fucking Rio Grande into the goddamn, you know, uh, to send them packing down the river, you know, to Mexico somewhere, to Ciudad Juarez. We kicked them out of New Mexico. So Pope's Pueblo Revolution of 1680 is going to take New Mexico back for the Puebloan people for, you know, at least 12 years for a whole decade. True or false, 13, Pope was tortured while in captivity in Ciudad Juarez. No, false. He was tortured in captivity while he was in Santa Fe, not Ciudad Juarez. Number 14, what kind of native American was Pope? He was Tiwa. He was Tiwa, which is the San Juan Pueblo, but that's also known as the O.K. Owinge. The O.K. Owinga. Owinge. Owinge. The Owinge. Gay. Gay. G-E-H. Gay. Owinge. O.K. Owinge. O.K. Owinge. O.K. Owinge. Number 15, what is San Juan Pueblo called today since 2005? O.K. Owinge. So, that's not the San Juan Pueblo. It's got San Juan is actually easier to read for me than this O.K. Owinge. The O.K., the O.O., the double O, go to the double O. The O.K. Owinge. Oh, just the O.K., just go to the O.K. Owinge. Go, we're going to the O.K. Owinge. O.K. Owinge. O.K. Owinge. I don't like it. I, I know it's like the, the traditional thing. I feel like I'm not, maybe I'm not saying it right. Because why would they say it's so stupid? The traditional way is so dumb. You gotta, it, it's gotta sound better. Skip a kit the key. That sounds better. Skip a kit the key. Okay, a wingay. San Juan Pueblo is easier to remember, easier to distinguish. It's the historical, the written historical name. Okay, a wingay. Okay, I'll try to. I'll try, I'll. It's been since 2005, so for 16 years, right? Okay, a wingay. Okay, wingo, okay, wingo. That's where the Pope came from, right? So, okay, Pope. Pope, okay, a wingay. Pope, Pope, okay, a wingay since 2005. 16, Chief Greenhorn. What kind of Native American was Chief Greenhorn? He was a Comanche. Now, let's see. What year did Vargas enter Colorado? 1694. What month? Uh, July. What day? 7th or the 8th? Who was the leader of the Pueblo Revolution of 1680? Pope named five natives native to the San Luis Valley. The Utes, the Comanches, the Apaches, the Arapaho, the Kiowa, the Tiwa, the Towa, the Tanos. Which Native American tribe ran Vargas out of New Mexico into Colorado in 1694 into the history books? That would be the Apache del Ocho. What happened to the 2,000 Spanish colonists of Santa Fe after the Pueblo Revolt of 1680 was over? They got ran out. They ran out. They left. They left Santa Fe. And that's why the brown people took New Mexico back for ourselves. I mean, themselves. What day did the 1680 Pueblo Revolution against the Spanish conquistadors begin? I want to say August 10th. I've seen August 14th, but the August 10th day is just particular because they had the tied rope. But they caught a runner, and they tortured him, and they found out the whole fucking scheme about the ropes. And then they're like, well, shit, that means there's only two more days. That means there's going to be a goddamn attack in two days. Is that what you're telling us? And, you know, the runner, whatever, fucking. So, Pope, he was, you know, just fucking shucking and jiving, right? Just old rope-a-dope, you know, old rope-a-dope Pope. You know what he does? He says, well, fuck it. They think that there's going to be an attack in two days. Let's have an attack in tomorrow. And they did it. <coughs> One day early. This is just review for the other eight questions. So August 10th. One day early. It was supposed to be August 11th, but then it became August 10th. August 14th. I don't know where Ruth Marie Colville it's Kind of a chaotically written book, to be honest with you. When did the Spanish establish Santa Fe as the capital of the Kingdom of New Mexico? 
This was 1610 was what I originally found, but then I had read differently that 1608 to 1610 he was in the process of establishing, you know, a colony in Santa Fe. So 1608 to 1610, I think I put, I think I put 1608 to 1610, so somewhere, any of those dates would work, right? When did, okay, that's when the capital of the kingdom in New Mexico, and then the last question, which Native American tribes participated in Pope's Pueblo Revolution of 1680? Pecos, Pecos is actually on the right side of Pope's Revolution, but Pecos is going to be fucking loyal to the guy named Spanish 12 years later. What the fuck's up with the Pecos, huh? So the Pecos is on the right side, and then they're going to flip-flop. And then you got the Zuni, the Hopi, the Tiwa, the Taiwa, the Towa, the Tano, and then the Kiri-speaking Pueblos. Uh, the Pueblos, the Kiri-speaking. So maybe the Kiris, just call them the Kiris, right? They're the Kiri-speaking uh, people of the Pueblo villages of the Rio Grande Valley. So that's what I assume with all those, right? The Tano, Towa, Tiwa, Taiwa, Kiris, Kiris, Kiris. Okay, so Hopi, Zuni, Pecos. And then there you go. There you go. So you have, you know, a lot of written historical records. You got a lot of archaeological evidence you got to, you know, undo. So you fucking Tartarians. I know you don't believe the brown people were here, but they were. They were here before white people, which doesn't even make any sense. Like, what? <laughs> How could you even... Just being born here before the, you know, that doesn't give you the credit or that doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's so stupid. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Like, ultimately, we should have done integration, you know, historically. There was a, the, that's a, anyways, all you fascists are bound to lose anyway, so. All you fascists are bound to lose. All you fascists.